Hello everyone, Peyton here, and welcome to a first impressions video, where I'm going to talk to you a little bit unscripted about a video game I have been playing, and that game is Kirby and the Forgotten Land, the very soon to be released new 3D Kirby title, <laughs> what a mouthful, <laughs> which not to be confused with the mouthful mode in this game, but I'll get to that in a minute, yeah, I... A little backstory about me, I've never really cared much for Kirby games. I played Kirby's Adventure, Kirby Superstar, and Kirby's Avalanche with my family when I was younger, and I actually own and did play Kirby's Epic Yarn on the Wii, but yeah, it's those four games and nothing else. And three of them I did not buy. Three of them my family owned and I just played when I was younger, and I enjoyed those games, but... Yeah, I'm not really much of a Kirby guy. I have never been intrinsically drawn into that series. There's nothing about it that really speaks to me most of the time. Not that I think it's bad or anything, it's just it's not what I look for in a game. All of that changed when Kirby and the Forgotten Land got a teaser, though. I really love 3D platformers. Banjo-Kazooie is one of my favorite games ever. I love Super Mario 64, Mario Galaxy. Go down the list, I love like a ton of 3D platformers. Hat in Time also is awesome. They're just, they're fun and they're what I generally think some of the most entertaining video games are. And Kirby in the Forgotten Land is randomly one of those. It is, <laughs> I don't think Kirby has ever done a true 3D game before this point. I know there was Kirby in the Crystal Shards, I think it's called, on the Nintendo 64 or uh, Kirby 64 for short, but uh, number one, I never played that, even though I actually, it, that's one of the only Kirby games I can think of off the top of my head where I'm like, I would absolutely try that if I had a chance. But number two, that was like a 2.5D platformer. It wasn't like a true uh, 3D platformer like, you know, the games I just listed are. Jack and Daxter's another one too. I just really love these games. All of that is to say, of course, Kirby and the Forgotten Land is one of them, and they released a demo for it. It was either, at, I think it was today at the time I'm recording this. It was really fun. I just finished playing through it, and I immediately wanted to sit down and let you guys know my thoughts. If you've not been into Kirby like me, because I'm assuming if, you know, anybody's checking this video out, it's because they're interested to know, is it, like, living up to what I'm seeing in the trailers? Like, I'm sure Kirby fans are just eating this up right now. Like, it looks great, for sure. It's one of, I think, the graphically speaking, nicest looking games on the Switch, like, in its entire library, even amongst the first party titles. But, like, actually sitting down and playing it, I was... I didn't really have any doubts going into it that I'd like it, but I guess it was just gonna be the execution. Like, does it feel as good to play as it looked in trailers and stuff. And if I will say this, if you like what you're seeing in the trailers and if you like what you're seeing on screen, this is the gameplay I recorded, go get this game when it comes out on March 25th. I can almost guarantee you, you're gonna like this if it looks even a little interesting to you. I don't know, it might've been a hat in time, but I don't know when the last time I picked up a 3D platformer and it just clicked so instantly for me like this game has. It is just so instantly enjoyable. It is like effortlessly fun in a game that, in a, in a game, in a way that most other games wish they could achieve. Like, when you start playing, it takes like all of a minute to get used to the fact that the B button is how you suck up enemies, and the A button is how you jump. They flipped them for this, but it makes sense very quickly as you keep playing, and man, you control so well in the air, you have so many different ways to attack, there's so many copy abilities, mouthful mode, 
even though it still doesn't make sense to me, like, just logically speaking, because I thought Kirby's whole shtick was that he could suck up anything. Who cares, though? You can attack people as a vending machine. <laughs> I don't know who said we should be able to have players be able to hit enemies as a vending machine on the development team, but thank you, whoever you are, truly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for including that. This game is just a joy to play, and... I knew I was going to like it, just based on the trailers, because Nintendo is so upfront about what's in their games if you watch their trailers. Like, I knew it'd be fun, but man, this demo is something else. And, and before I get even further into the gameplay, I just would like to take a moment to say, again, if you're interested in this game, which I don't know why else you'd be watching this video unless <laughs> you were, you need to go and download the demo and complete it. It's super short. It took me like less than an hour to finish. I cannot recommend it enough just for the gameplay, but if that's not enough to like get you sucked in, like if you want to go in with completely fresh eyes, I still recommend that you go and get the demo and beat it anyways, because there is an extra they give you at the end of the demo that makes it well worthwhile. So I'm not going to spoil what that is, but trust me when I say you need to go download this demo and beat it so that it, it'll... It'll be worth it. I'll just leave it there. But going back to the gameplay, man, it, again, I can't even think of the last time I started playing a game and it just controlled like this. It controls like a dream. You just instantly get used to it. As soon as, again, as soon as your mind wraps around that they kind of flip the usual jump and attack buttons, everything just feels right. Attacking enemies with anything just feels so seamless exploring with this kind of fixed camera but they give you a little wiggle room with it it's just so enjoyable and the world there's so much detail everywhere i actually one of the missions was to like find five of this thing in a level and i didn't even complete it i thought i was blazing through it and getting everything on my way but i actually missed one of them like this is going to be an I guess an on-rails 3D platformer, but it's not really on-rails. It's just not like open world like uh, Mario Odyssey. There's like a structure to it, but it, j it just feels so good. Oh, man, I'm just <laughs> I'm just going on about how good I think it is. Uh, the music's also nice. Uh, I can't really remember how it goes, but I know when I'm listening to it, it sounds good. There's uh, one boss fight included, and it's easy, which, speaking of easy... I actually played the game on the harder of the two difficulties. It defaults your, you to um, Spring Breeze mode, but I went... I, I forget what it's called. I think it has Wild in the name, but I went with the harder difficulty because, you know, Kirby games tend to be on the easy side. Absolutely recommend that. Like, if you're... If you have any experience with these games, like, the harder difficulty is basically a necessity, which isn't a bad thing because, again, this game... The, the thing with Kirby, the thing with Kirby's Epic Yarn specifically, because that's the one newer Kirby game I played. I know it was on the Wii, and the Wii's two consoles old at this point, but the thing with Kirby's Epic Yarn is that it was so easy that you start, like, getting bored while playing it, and by doing that, you start taking hits that you really shouldn't slash wouldn't. And this game isn't like that at all, and it's not that this game is significantly harder and you have to be paying attention, it's that this game has so much more going on. Like in Epic Yarn, everything was very slow, and all your attacks are like very overpowered for what they need to do, and there was exploration and everything, but... I don't know. I think it's just the fact that you have so much coming at you at once, like so many different like chances to experiment with stuff and the levels are laid out in a way that beautifully complement your moveset and all the different uh, copy abilities you can earn. It, it just, there's constantly like at least like two things going on to keep you engaged, which for me, again, it was like all the different copy abilities and everything there is to explore, which I'm impressed that they managed to get that feeling down in three levels because yeah, the demo is only three levels long and it still feels like a like a very significant chunk of the game was given to you. But going off the trailers they're showing without spoiling anything, 
it looks like there is a ton going on in this game. This is going to be a really big game if the trailers are, you know, showing stuff from, like, worlds along, I guess. Because, yeah, I just... It, it feels like I played a very well-polished, like, demo. Which, <laughs> it literally is a demo. But it feels like a very early on like project i guess not in that it's unpolished but that it's like wow i can't wait for there to be an update that adds more you know stuff to do in this game but the full game is coming out in weeks it's coming out on march 25th so the demo i guess in short did its job it has completely sold me on wanting to play this whole game and i will absolutely be picking it up day one and this is a little bit of an unconventional first impressions because, I mean, I don't have the full game yet, but yeah, I don't think I need it. I think if the whole game is half as good as this demo, I am going to love it. This is quite possibly the most fun I've had with a video game, just picking it up and starting it instantly. I've had in, like, I don't even know, like, maybe... Maybe a year. It's just crazy how instantly fun this game is. Cannot recommend it enough. If you want to switch, go download the demo. Go beat it. Go enjoy it. And I do think that is everything. This has been Payton. Let me know what you think of Kirby in the Forgotten Land. I know I basically just gushed about it for like 10 minutes, but... You know, sometimes, sometimes when a game's good enough, that's really all you need to know. Because... I, I get the impression this might end up being one of my favorite games on the Switch, which I would not have guessed at all coming from the Kirby series. Take care, everybody.